So first thing is traditional, put your feet together, show mutual respect to each other, bow, oops, all right, here we go. All right, so let's just do a quick light stretch, feet apart, hands in front of you like this, I want you to roll your arms all the way behind you and all the way forward. We're not gonna do, just like you're trying to grab the front of the room and wipe it with your fingers, we're not gonna do an extensive stretch today. We're gonna try to get right to it, but I don't want uh, all of us old guys to tear anything. All right, so big circles, big circles, forward, to the front, to the front, to the front. Good, and backwards, you can roll them backwards, all the way behind you, make sure you're breathing. Even now, practice your breathing, in your nose, and out your mouth, in your nose, out your mouth, cross them on the inside. Now across your chest and back, touch your back, just like this, breathe, keep breathing, try to relax your body and your muscles, excellent, good. Like I said, just a light stretch for today. Hands on your hips like this. Okay, now what you want to do is, is work your neck. Uh, rolling your neck is actually not good, so we're going to just go side to side. All you're going to do is to your left, you're going to go one, two, and then one, two, one, two, one, two. Put your hands on your hips. Hands on your hips, one, two, one, two. Good. All right, this will help with our neck breaks tonight. No, I'm just joking. Okay. And then front and back, one, two, one, two, one, two. One, two, one, two, one, two. Keep breathing. Good, and hands and hips. All right, now, most important thing here when you work your lower body is that you lock your legs. So I've taught martial arts across the country. Thousands of students, I've been to schools where I've gone to train their black belt staff. And you'll even see guys that are wearing black belts that are stretching, they think they're flexible. They're actually not because their knees are bent. So they're stretching with their knee bent, which means that you're not really that flexible, as flexible as you think you are. So I want you to lock your knees in place. We're gonna work our hips now, hands on your hips. And when you go down, you're gonna go back. And when you go down, you're gonna keep your legs locked as you go down and back and then forward. Keep your hands on your hips for this one, just like this. And just keep those knees locked as you're moving back and forth. Good, make sure you maintain that breathing. Fill your body with oxygen, relax your muscles. Good. Yes, good. Breathe. And now we're going to stop and go side to side, keeping your hip, doing the motion, and lock your knees. Hips, hips. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. Keep your hips, doing the motion, lock your legs. Good. And now I want everyone to get down in a frog stance. Just like this, and the balls of your feet. Okay, here we go. Kick out your right leg all the way out, toes to the sky. You're staying on the ball of your foot like this with your toes all the way up, knee locked. So if your toes are down, you're not actually extending your muscle. This is flexing the muscle. It's stretching it all the way. So if you're relaxing your foot, you're not getting the most of the stretch. So pull those toes back towards your face. Lock your leg. Keep it locked. Hands over. I want you to stretch towards the leg. Keep the toes up, feel that stretch, keep your leg locked, make sure you're breathing in your nose, out your mouth, just go as far as you can without tearing something. So dull pain is good, sharp, hot pain, stop. Good, now hold that, excellent, good, make sure you keep breathing, and now come on back into the frog. Excellent, now kick out the left leg, toes to the sky, same rule applies, lock the leg, toes pulled back towards your face so you're stretching that muscle, making it long, and nose to knee is the goal. Good, keep your toes pulled back towards your face so you're not getting the most of the stretch. Breathe, good, hold that stretch, hold that stretch. Good, excellent, excellent. All right. Now, I want you to come on up, feet at least double your shoulder width, lock your legs, do not bend your legs even a little bit, so get to where your legs are locked. Go as far as you can with your legs locking. Now, I want you to pull your hands behind your body and hold that stretch with the legs locked. Good, good, hold. All right, now have a seat. Again, if you're just getting here, we're just doing a light stretch so you don't uh, injure yourselves. Toes to the sky. Now I want you to pull your 
Left leg back inside. Just a, a tip. I know a lot of us in our high school days were taught to do this stretch here. I re highly recommend never ever doing that stretch again. Okay? This is really bad on your knee. It'll cause damage over time. You can get the same stretch without putting stress on the knee. So just pull it in like this. Same stretch. Same thing. Okay? So just to, how many of you guys learned that in high school? You're doing gym class or whatever. You threw the leg behind you and stretched forward. It, t it pulls on the side of the knee unnecessarily. So toes up. Now, the rule is always the same. Lock the leg. So you might be able to go super far with your knee bent like this and your foot down, but that's not an accurate stretch, OK? It's not even showing you how flexible you really are. So toes back. Lock your leg. Make that muscle nice and long. Pull the muscle apart. Back straight. Good posture. We're going to do ballistic stretching. That's bouncing, OK? Again, light stretching. We'll do ballistic stretching. So what you're going to do is you can go down one and come up. Okay, down two and come up. Ready? Down three and come up. Down four and come up. Down five and come up. Down six and come up. Down seven and come up. Down eight, come up. Down nine. And here, watch it. Here's your goal. First goal is nose to knee here. Okay. Second goal is chin to shin. Last goal is forehead to toes. Okay. Is it possible? Yep. Okay, here we go. Ready? And by the way, with flexibility, <clears throat> a lot of people think, well, I'm old, I can't get flexible now. Okay, not true at all. Not true at all. Flexibility is something you can always get. I've, taught, I've had guys, Jerry knows, I've had guys come in 62 years old, come, I mean, like, like a brick house, can't move their body very far. After about a year of consistent stretching and training, totally flexible in the splits and all the rest. It just takes time and proper technique. Okay, so again, Dull pain is what you're, wor what you're working for. Sharp, hot pain is no good. Don't do it, OK? So you're going to come all the way down, nose to knee. Try that. Go. And come up. Good job. All right, now switch feet. Other one out. Bring it inside. All right. Now, toes to the sky. My feet are dirty because I ran outside to get your pads. Don't, don't judge me, OK? All right, here we go. Back straight. Don't bend the knee and don't put your foot forward. OK, it's not flexibility here. So we're going to do ballistic stretching again. One, good. Toes to the sky, two. Ready, three, four. Breathing, five, good. Six, good. Seven, eight, nine, and ten. Relax. Feel good? Yeah? All right, so a couple things I've discovered is important to do. I wanted to, to do this, obviously, for the benefit of our church body, our men. Uh, to be able to defend your families, possibly defend somebody at church during a worship service, something like that. We always want to make sure that we're planning ahead, being wise. I wanted to put it out on the Internet to bless other Christians uh, with as well. But I discovered something as, uh, as I put it up, and I want to sort of address some of the philosophy behind uh, combat, uh, just warfare, just self-defense, uh, because it, it's, it's apparent to me that a lot of Christians have a very convoluted perspective of uh, the New Covenant itself, the Christian worldview. Um, it's not very comprehensive, not very consistent. So I want to just address a couple things real fast in terms of, of Christian worldview, comprehensive Christian worldview. So let's just start with a, a passage of Scripture. I quoted it before, but I think it's really, really important. Psalm 144.1, one of my favorite verses in the Bible. In my martial arts school, many, 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 many years ago, I had this big sign, Psalm 144, 1, when you walked in, and everyone got it. And uh, they also got a lot of gospel in that karate school, whether they liked it or not. Uh, and the verse is, Blessed be the Lord by rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. Now, amazingly, the Psalms actually were the hymnal. They were the, so the, the songs, the Psalms, songs, operated as the hymn book of the Jews, the early church, they sang these songs. Historically, throughout the history of Christianity, the Psalms worked as the song book. You sing these. They're songs that you sing, right? So Psalm 144, 1 would have been something that Jesus sang, right? Can you imagine little Jesus in synagogue singing Psalm 141, blessed, 144, 1, blessed be the Lord my rock who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. We have to think about this comprehensively and consistently. What a lot of people struggle with 
is they think in terms of, well, we have to be about the gospel. And the answer is absolutely. Our job is to preach the gospel, to lead the nations to Jesus. We want to win people to Christ. We don't want to be the aggressors ever. So people say, well, aren't Christians supposed to be pacifists? And what do you think is the number one most quoted verse by Christian pacifists or Christians who think you shouldn't train in combat arts or anything? What, what is it? What do you think? Turn the other cheek. Jesus says in the Sermon on the Mount, if somebody strikes you on the right cheek, turn to them the other. You've heard it said, and um, the, the quotation is from Exodus. It's from the law of God in terms of penology, penalties, and it has to do with God saying there has to be just weights and measures. So Jesus is not repudiating the law of God in the Sermon on the Mount. This is vitally important for us to get, and it goes into everything we're doing here as this should be worship. All of life is worship. Amen? Yes? Okay. It's weird. I'm wearing a karate uniform like, amen, boys? Okay. 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 Not behind a pulpit. All of life is worship. When you do art to the glory of God, you're worshiping God, right? When you're building something, creating something, and you're doing it for the glory of God, you're worshiping God. When you are engaging in training for combat, you are worshiping God. If you have a proper Christian worldview, you can see it, should see it, ought to see it like that. When Jesus is in the Sermon on the Mount, he isn't repudiating the law of God. That's a very, very popular but false notion of what Jesus is doing. Because in Matthew chapter 5, Jesus actually says in 519, he says, Do not even begin to think that I've come to destroy the law or the prophets. It did not come to destroy them, but to fulfill. So, me namasete in the Greek is, is a very powerful way to say this. It's, it's not just stop thinking. right? Like you're thinking this and I'd like you to stop thinking it. Menamasete is him saying, don't even begin. Don't even let the thought in your mind, it shouldn't be there, don't even start thinking that I've come to destroy the law of the prophets that I have not come to destroy them, but to fulfill them. And then he goes on to the popular parts of the Sermon on the Mount where Jesus says, not it is written, but I say to you, if Jesus did that, we'd have a lot of trouble, a lot to worry about if Jesus says, God says, but I'm saying something different. It'd be a big problem. Jesus says, you've heard that it was said. And then he starts quoting their misinterpretations of the law of God. He's not repudiating the law of God. He actually says to them, if you teach somebody to break even the least of these commandments, you'll be called least in the kingdom of heaven. And he says, but whoever does them and teaches them, they'll be called great in the kingdom of heaven. And right after that, he starts dealing with how they're mishandling the law of God and the word of God. So they would say things like this, hey, eye for eye, tooth for tooth. Eye for eye, tooth for tooth, baby. And that for them was an excuse to get revenge on somebody. So they took what was a standard in God's law. It literally is a standard in terms of murder. And isn't it interesting? It has to do with a baby dying in the womb as a result of two men carelessly fighting. It's a case law example. This is really important. Follow me on this. In that case law example, a woman is pregnant. Two men are being uh, careless and they end up fighting and hurting the pregnant woman and it ends in the death of a child, God says, you shall repay eye for eye, tooth for tooth, limb for limb. In other words, God says equal justice, equal justice. It's not saying pluck someone's eye out. It was a, it was a way of saying equal justice for the crime. So Jesus in the Sermon on the Mount addresses their misapprehension of the law of God because they were saying, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, baby. I can get revenge anytime I want. And Jesus actually corrects that view. And he says in terms of our basic posture, if somebody strikes you on the right cheek, turn to them the other. Has nothing whatever to do with physical combat. The Hebrews were a right-handed culture. They were a right-handed culture. You worked, labored with your right hand. You have all the references in Scripture to the right hand. Even God saying, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet. It was a right-handed culture. They labored with the right hand, worked with the right hands. And so if somebody was to strike you in a right-handed culture on the right cheek, how would they have to do it? Right-handed culture. What is this? That's the backhanded slap. The backhanded slap. The insult. That's what Jesus is addressing. He's not addressing Christian pacifism and Christians can never engage in self-defense to defend their wife who's being raped or their children who are being injured by somebody or an innocent bystander who's being jumped by somebody. I would actually go so far as to say if as Christian men we don't defend the innocent, we're in sin against God. 
I would actually say if you see somebody being attacked and you can do something about it and you don't in the name of Christian pacifism or some ideology like that, you'll have to answer to God for that. I believe that very strongly because of a comprehensive view of Scripture. God actually has a case law example about somebody breaking into your home at night. You don't know their intentions. You break into your home, and you end up, obviously, through self-defense, killing the person, and they were breaking in. You didn't know their intention. You kill the person, the intruder, who could have killed you. God says you're not guilty. You're not guilty. When you engaged in self-defense for your life, you were not guilty. That principle is a principle that God gives in terms of justice. If you are being attacked, you have a right, according to God, to defend yourself, even to the point of killing another human being, who was the person who was the aggressor. Now, I want to address this in terms, again, of a comprehensive Christian worldview. God says, Psalm 144, 1, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. This training right now should be glorifying to God. Because what are we training for? Not to injure innocent victims. What are we training for? We're training to defend ourselves against somebody in a fallen world who is wicked. The idea of Christian pacifism, I would say the ideal of Christian pacifism, is right. It's good. We don't want war. We don't want combat. We don't want to see other image bearers of God die. We should have a posture that essentially is pacifism in a sense, except we need to remember one thing. We don't live in that world. We live in a fallen world. We live in a fallen world, so Christians have to be able to think in categories. I want to make sure that I'm never the aggressor. I don't want to injure another human being. I don't want to kill another human being. That's how we ought to live. I want to love my enemy, and I want to do good to them and love my neighbor as I love myself. But in a fallen world, there is such a thing as just warfare, and God even lays down principles about how we engage in just warfare. In other words, we want to always assume a posture of innocence, and defense, never offense. So in other words, as a Christian, to glorify God, when we're training right now for combat, we're training to actually defend ourselves or our family or friends or innocent victims against somebody who is the aggressor. We're never the ones who are the aggressors. We're always taking a defensive posture, trying to flee wherever we can. But does Scripture give us a basis, a foundation to use weapons, I've done shows on this. There, there are numerous passages where God commands people to defend with weapons, those sorts of things. Does God actually say it's a righteous principle to prepare to defend uh, your family and friends and loved ones against somebody who would be the aggressor? The answer is yes. And God actually has as a part of our songbook, Blessed be the Lord, my rock, who trains my hands for war, my fingers for battle. The whole idea of, hey, if somebody strikes you on your cheek, turn to them the other, is not in context, and it has to do with the backhanded insult. So I would say this as men. This is really hard, and I'll make a confession. This is hard for me. When somebody tries to get aggressive, and they just start insulting and saying nasty things, your first response as a man is to be ready to go, right? You want to attack. Well, the, the obedience to Jesus at this point is if another man insults you, is nasty to you, calls you names, that's the backhanded slap. You turn the other cheek. You do walk away from those. You should never engage in combat because somebody calls you a name. It would be a sin against God to do something like that, and it would actually be defying what Jesus says in Matthew 5 about turning the other cheek. We turn the other cheek. We take the insult. So what? But the moment a person starts to try to attack you, to injure you, to physically harm you or a loved one, that's where you have cause before God to defend the weak, to defend the innocent, and to defend your own lives and property. Somebody might say, yes, well, I can understand defending the victim. You see a victim, you go to defend them. But if you get attacked, you should do nothing, right? You should just take it. You should take the beating. And what I say today to that is this. That is an absolute act of hatred on my part. Why? Because I'm a husband and I'm a father. If somebody attacks me and I just take it, who's going to suffer? My wife and my children. Let's say that I get beaten to death. In high school, my 12th grade year, one of my friends, PJ, was beaten to death in a matter of seconds. He was coming home uh, with friends. He was in his car. He got out of his car real fast to go grab something from his house. He was walking back to his car. It's about 9 or 10 o'clock at night. There's some guys from my high school. We were only in 12th grade. 
uh, that were, they didn't like him, they had a problem with him, so they were lying in wait for him. And as soon as he walked out of his house, they jumped him. People in the car saw it happening, tried to get out of the car to help. Within, say, 15 seconds, this kid was dead, stomped to death, right? So you might say, well, maybe I'll just take a beating for Jesus. All right, we take a beating for Jesus, but what that, what's that say about your family? What's it say about your ability to provide for your kids? Love actually has to consider all the ramifications of a situation like that, and a father or a husband taking a beating even to death because he wants to do it in the name of Christian pacifism is neglecting his responsibility to his wife and to his children. That's a comprehensive way of thinking about combat. And so it's really, really important. I wanted to address it, and then one more thing, and let's get started. Uh, in here, I'm sensei. In here, I, I have five black belts, both in combat systems, not in sport systems, both in combat systems. Grew up in Japan, all over the world, world champion, all that stuff. So I earned and trained in the martial arts the degrees of uh, master and then, of course, these combat arts. I have those. And so my title on these videos was Master Durban. And everybody said, what do you think you're doing calling yourself a master? Didn't Jesus say, didn't Jesus say, call no one master? And my response to that is context is such an important thing here. Keep going. What else did he say? He said, and call no one your what? Father? Do you think Jesus is really saying there that there are no such thing as fathers? You don't call anyone dad? No, that's not what Jesus is talking about there. We can go into details on that, but it has nothing to do with that. Context is everything. And also, I'll just address it this way. Master Durbin has nothing to do with who I am to you. I am not your master. But Master Durbin has to do with what I have mastered in the martial arts. It has to do with what you've learned, not who you are. It's what you know, not who you are. So I am nobody's master. We good in that here? Yes, good. Okay, right on. It's a master of a particular style or skill. Okay, so now that we have all, uh, all that out of the way, uh, one more time, hands up if you were here last time. Here last time, good. Okay, hands down, just so I understand. Who was not here, hands up. I want to make sure I spot you. I know exactly where you're at. Okay, excellent. All right, so we're going to just kind of move quickly through some things and then try to expand today. So for those of you guys who weren't here last time, you're going to have to play catch up, okay? But it'll be a lot of fun. Um, now, real fast, too, I want to address this. What you're learning right now is a blitz. I'm giving you the information dump, all right? I love martial science. Fighting science is such an amazing thing, and it's always getting better. That's the glorious thing about martial arts, is it's always getting better. Every generation is getting better. It's supposed to be that way, right? Because we're learning new ways to be more effective, how to counter something. What we're doing right now is, is an immersion experience. This is about the second hour of the training that I've taught. This is not comprehensive. You have a lot of people that when they see something like this, they'll say, well, actually, there's a counter to that. And the answer is, yeah, there is. And that's why you need lots of training. <laughs> Praise God there's a counter to that move, right? Like if somebody had a move and it was like, there's no way out of this. It's humanly impossible like, to get out of this hole. It's like, oh, shoot. I hope no one ever gets me in that, <laughs> right? Because there's no way out of it. There's always a, a, an attempt or a way to counter something. So what you're learning today is rudimentary skills. I want to give you things that work, that are solid techniques, that are devastating techniques, because this is not a four-year course this is a crash course. We're in about the second hour, okay? So here we go. Make sure you have space. You guys feel free to uh, move, fill in the gaps. You can get over here. You can get here. Wherever you can find space, just make sure you don't hurt yourselves, okay? If you're standing on cords, you can feel free to move around so you don't, you don't get stuck on cords. All right, first thing, let's work on our hands first. And I want you guys to break your hands, all right? So take your hands like this. First thing is how do you roll a fist? You never roll a fist grabbing the palms like this. That leaves space between your knuckles, and that give will break a bone, all right? It's easy to break your fingers. I've broken all my fingers and all my toes in the martial arts. My shin came out of my leg once. Um, so your bodies, you know, they're not always built for clashing, and you can't hurt yourself. So what you want to do is make sure you do it properly. Hands up. Grab that top skin right there, and you want to take that skin there and squash that skin. Thumbs on the side. Number one rule, what? Never put your thumbs where? All right, you ever see it? First, the first thing a four-year-old does when you say, get a fight stance, they're like this, right? Now, thumbs come right. You can pick your thumb up off the floor. So hands like this, grab that top skin, squish thumbs here. Now, I would say this. You need to rehearse this. 
you got to practice it. It's just got to be a part of muscle memory. Where you're, and the only way to do it is just literally walk around your house and do this. If you're married, you'll look like an idiot, but just walk around and just practice this here, squeezing tight, tight, tight. Take your thumbs just like this. I want you to put them on your temple like this, temples. All right, now drop your hands about six inches in front of your face here. Now I want your hands here in front of your face because I want you to be able to guard against all attacks coming here. You can move, you, even if you lose control, you can at least get tucked tight enough to be able to guard yourself and not have your vitals struck. You can guard your inside of your body, hands like this. There are thousands of hours we can put into blocking and blocking drills, trapping drills, all kinds of stuff. But for now, I want to do the basics. Guard in front of your face here. Okay, everyone, take your left foot, put it in front of you, facing the target. Your right foot's going to be about shoulder width at a 45 degree angle. So this foot is just set off at a 45 while this foot's facing the attacker. Hands in front of your face, guards there. Nice and tight. Let's see it. Good. Okay, now come back to attention stands like this, guys, here. When I say go, I want you guys to race. So feet together like this, hands to your side. When I say go, I want you to go as fast as you can from the attention stance right here. You're going to pop back, right foot 45, hands here just like this, fast as you can. Ready? And mark, set, go. Fast. And come back again. Feet together. Ready? And go. Fast. Ready? Come back again. Ready? And go. Good. Back again. Ready? And go. Faster. Ready? Back again. Now, if you turn your bodies all the way sideways, you just lost half your tools. All right? So now, are there ever times in the martial arts where you would want to get totally sideways? Yeah, there's reasons for that. There's reasons. You're setting somebody up. You're trying to, to, to fool them, make them think you're doing something you're really not. But right now, we're trying to focus on, a, on an immediate threat and throw the most deadly tools that I can at this attacker to make sure that I incapacitate them. So I'm not going to stay sideways and only have access to an arm and a leg. I want all my weapons facing the front, but I don't want to stand just like this. I'm wide open, OK? You need to be able to move your body. So if you're facing them head on, just like this, you're in big trouble. You're wide open. So you want to be here so you can at least turn and move out of the way. 45, this foot's facing the target. So let's try it together. Ready and go, fast. Good, back again. Ready and go, back. And back again. Ready and go. Good, and back again. Ready, go. Good, ready, back again. And go. Good, back again. Now let's try something real fast. Get your butts up. Don't put your butts out, OK? You don't want your butts out because your weight distribution is way off. You can't maneuver this way. So we're going to go distribution of weight 50-50. I want you to imagine you have a pole running through your head, and it's going right out your crack down to the ground, OK? Don't break that pole. You want to stay upright, chin down right here like this. You can bend your knees, but I don't want you to be like this, OK? So ready, everyone? Feet together and go. Good. Back again. Ready and go. And back again. Now let's try the rehearsal. How does that fist have to look? Show me your fist. You got to have a proper fist. Roll the fist, roll the fist, roll the fist, and back down. If you listen, how you train is how you work. How you train is how you fight. If you train to quit, you will quit in real life. There's a lot to do. There's a lot about training that's really important in terms of like even spiritual disciplines. If you're trying to beat your physical body into subjection, but then you quit because things are hard or your training is off, you're, you're building bad habits, right, to do those things always. So if you're training with an improper fist, you will fight with an improper fist. It doesn't happen magically. Muscle memory is memorizing that, mo that motion. Ready, everyone? Here we go. Ready, step back. Go. And back again. Ready, and go. And back again. Ready, and go. Good. Back again. And go. Back again. OK, one rule. Just uh, take a knee real fast, guys. If your weight distribution isn't right, 50-50, if you don't have good depth to yourself, 50-50 weight distribution, you can't move as easily, OK? I can move easy here. But if I'm like this here, I've lost a lot of mobility, OK? I'm not balanced. I can fall over. I can trip over my own legs. I want to be balanced 50-50. So try it with your legs a little farther apart. On your feet, everyone? Let's try that. Don't have your feet so close together you're going to trip over your own feet. Ready? Start with your feet together. Get back in that fighting stance quickly. Ready? Go! And back again. Ready? And go! And back again. OK, concepts now. Now, when you rock somebody's chin, when you tag their chin and you shake their jaw, what happens? Jaw. All right. OK. Is everything all right, everything all right over there? OK. If you shake somebody's jaw or their chin, what happens? 
lights out. Your body goes into reboot mode. Just fall, you fall asleep, you come back in a minute, okay? So you want to make sure that when you do this, your chin's not out like this, okay? You need your jaw, not like this, but you got to keep your chin down, okay? Keep your chin down when you're fighting. If you expose your jaw and your jaw gets tagged, you fall asleep. I was just watching a UFC video uh, yesterday. Stella was watching UFC knockouts. And um, in the UFC video, is one fight. I forget the fight, but two guys are fighting, and the one guy is trying to swing at him. This guy is just sort of like laughing. He's trying to taunt him. He's like, he's like, what, what, what? And within like four seconds of going, what, what? This guy barely clips his jaw. I mean, barely clips his jaw, and he goes, sleep, yeah, so out. Anderson Silva was that started. Anderson Silva? Yeah, I was, felt, at, I was at that fight. I mean, were you really? Well, all right, good. Was that a big moment? It's like, wow. Don't taunt somebody. <laughs> fight and fight seriously. Um, but it's just a little clip, just a little clip of that jaw, and you fall right asleep. It doesn't take a lot. A lot of people think, if I, just can, if I can knock this sucker in the head as hard as I can and fall asleep, well, generally, if you hit somebody in the skull, you're going to hurt your hand. Like, it'll hurt a lot. But also, if you hit somebody in the side of the head, it might really piss them off. Like, really bad. You know what I'm saying? That's just a lot of pain. It's just going to get their adrenaline pumping. They're going to get super mad. People think, well, I'll just hit that skull as hard as I can. Not a good idea. You can break something. They're going to get really mad. You want to think in terms of what works. Like, when I strike somebody, I'm going to shake their jaw. Okay, I'm going right for their jaw. If I'm doing something that's hooking, I'm going right for the jaw. All right? I'm going to go for the eyeballs. So, Instead of just jabbing somebody here, I can just eye rake. There, hit them right in the eyes. They can't see, and I can go, I can go home, okay? <laughs> like, fight's over, right? He can't see, I'm going home. Um, so you want to think in terms of what works, right? Don't box his skull. I want to go for his eyes. I want to go for his nose so that he can't see. I want to go for his jaw. I want to even go for his throat, depending on the circumstance. If you hit somebody in the trachea, you're trying to, you're trying to end their life, okay? I can also hit somebody in the neck here. And when you hit them in the carotid artery, they fall asleep. Okay, all it takes is a little pop, and um, your body goes into reboot mode. Okay, so thinking, how do you strike this guy's face? Nose, eyes, chin, neck, throat. That's what you're going for. Everyone got it? Yep. And, all, and always remember, from your perspective, I don't want him to do that to me, so my chin's not going to be exposed. Get my chin down. All right, so let's try fighting stance one more time. Ready and fighting stance. Go! All right, here we go. Let's do our angles. Last time we didn't do this. I want you to imagine right now, everybody, there's a V coming out from your toes. I want you to think about your attacker. Jerry, can you come on up here, please? Everyone take a knee real fast. All right, Jerry, stand right there. Fighting stance. All right. I want you to think about the attacker, not in terms of the million things that could happen. Now, think about this. If this guy comes to me on the street, I haven't got a clue what he knows. He could be better than me. He could be better than me on the ground. He could be destroy me on the ground or whatever the case may be. I don't know what he can do, but what's important is I know how to fight and maneuver so I can defend myself. You can know how to do certain things where even if this guy has more training than me, he has more skills than me, I could still walk away and actually be the person standing if I know how to operate in this zone. So he's the attacker. I want you to picture the V on the ground. Don't think about the million things, the different variety of punches, chops, ridge hands, spinning back fists, back fist jabs, cross, hooks, uppercuts, elbows, head butt, eye rakes, uh, tiger claws, uh, crane techniques. I mean, there's just so many, there's so many things. Knees, he has his knees as tools, he has his shins as tools, he has his feet as tools. There's just too much to think about. So what I need to think about is not the million things that can come my way and combinations, but I need to think about the floor. There's the V. The first angle is like this. I take my front foot. I step off at a 45 here with the front foot. Boy, this floor is slippery, slippery. Here, and I angle my body sideways here. So I'm still facing him. I can still throw techniques, but I'm off of his line. Here's the key. Remember this. Whoever owns the center line wins. Remember that because it's going to come out later, okay? Whoever owns and dominates the center line is going to win. So I want to make sure that I control my center line and that my center line is always facing him. I can always maneuver off my center line, but he's stuck right now. I have more options right now. So guards are here. First one is here. I throw step with the front, turn to the side here, okay? So that's angle one. Angle two is off to the side this way, okay? 
And angle three is one simple step back just to get space to guard, but I'm ready to strike again. All right, so let's work the angles. Everyone stand up, please. Thanks, Jerry. So again, you have to remember the angle, proper angles. Everyone do your fighting stance. OK, here we go. Make sure you have space around you. Picture a letter V coming off your big toe front foot. I want you to take just your front foot, everyone, and step off at a 45, off the V, slide your foot. Now you're facing off to the side. OK, now come back again. Let's try it again. Watch me again. Front foot steps, turns here. OK, there you go. Ready, guard? And ready, step, turn. Back again. Ready? Now, I want you to come inside a little bit, OK? That front foot's going to come inside, not that way. It's coming inside at a 45. You want a crowd of space. Ready? And one. Step, turn. Good. Back again. Ready? And one. Step, turn. Back again. Ready? And one. Step, turn. Ready? Back again. And one. Step, turn. And back again. Come on in, boys. You're missing the whole thing. Ready? Here we go. And one. Step, turn. And back again. All right, number two, a little different. Your back foot is going to go off the line 45 this way. OK, ready? And two. And back again. Very good. This guy comes to attack. He's coming in. I'm getting off of his line and angling out of his way, and I'm still controlling the ground. So guards are in. One more time. My right foot goes off. All I do is turn a little bit. Ready? And two. Back again. Ready? And two. Back again. All right, guys, here we go. Last one, number three. We're not running away from this guy. We're not turning our backs in a fight ever. If you turn your back, you're toast. You're done. If you turn your back and he gets on top of you, fight's over, OK? Guards, never turn your back under any circumstance. Guards here. Now, back foot shoots behind you. Push off the front foot. Step back, slide with the front. And back again. So. Watch how I do this. Here, I step back, slide. You try that. Ready? And step back, slide. Yes. Guard again. Ready? And step back, slide. And guard again. Ready? Step back, slide. And guard again. That's number three. OK, ready? Three. Back again. Excellent, boys. Ready? And three. And guard again. Ready? And three. Ready? Guard. Ready? Here we go. And one. Off the line. Ready? Back again. Ready? Two. Back again. Ready? And three. Back again. Ready? One. Back. Two. Turn. Ready? Back. And three. All right. So now get with the partner. Go. Yes. Fighting stance. So number two is just coming right off. Left foot's still going to face him. OK? Now you're learning it without a guy attacking. But in reality, it works like this. He comes in to attack. I'm here. OK? So you can come in for a punch with this hand, and I'm here. OK? So he comes in to say jab with this hand, off to the side. How? OK? He comes in to punch with this hand, boom, here. OK? All right. You boys ready? Yes? OK, take a knee. I'm going to skip past some things. For those of you guys that weren't here last time, you'll have to play catch up for today. The video is up on our YouTube channel, so you can watch that. But here's what we're going to do for today to get things uh, speeding along. Jerry, come on up. Here's what I want you guys to do. You can explore the space, use whatever you want. We're going to do it in this way. Take turns with each other. Jerry's going to throw a jab. That's one move. He's going to throw a cross, and that's another one. When I'm done with my set, I'm going to throw a jab and a cross at Jerry. Here's what it's going to look like. Jerry, I want you to throw slow so everyone can see for now. Throw the jab, like step towards me and throw a jab right here. Go. Here. OK? I want you just to get used to the angle. We're fighting. He goes to punch me, moving out of the way. Bang. OK? Here. Now, number two, he punches the backhand. Punch. Here. And hit. Now, everyone says, well, that's slow motion. I could find a way out of that. You're learning the ground. When you're fighting, things are much more fluid. He throws that punch. I'm off to the side here. Bang. Here. Like that. OK? So what we're going to do is take turns. Jerry, I'm going to jab at you. When I jab, I want you to do angle number two off to the side. Go. Boom. OK, back again. You should be sliding that foot right there. OK, crowd my space. Go. Boom. 
and your fighting foot, your left foot stays forward. So fighting stance works like this. Face me. When the guy comes in to jab, I'm getting off his line, and this foot's still forward facing him, okay? So you don't want to do a lot of footwork or anything here. It's just a simple step off to the side, my foot's still facing him, and hit him, okay? So I jab. Excellent. Good, and hit me. Boom. Okay? Now I'm going to reverse punch, cross. You're going to do angle one. Go, and reverse punch. There you go. Everyone got it? Yeah? So I want you to counter two. So, Jerry, you throw the one, one. I'm off to the side, pow. And two, off to the side, pow. Okay? Everyone understand? Good. All right, here we go. Explore the space. Yeah. Angle one, you should be coming inside here. Right, your right foot goes off. So he's going to punch me. Go. Right foot comes off here. Okay? Bang. The right foot is the one that moves for number two. And number one angle is off here to this angle. Pow. Okay? All right. Uh -huh. I'm shuffling with a, with a back foot, with the left foot staying forward, so my foot It's going to move like this, right foot, 45. So everyone, freeze for one sec, take a knee, take a knee, take a knee. Now, here's the easiest way to remember this so you know your angle's always correct. So Jerry up. I want you to remember this at all times. Try not to think, don't overcomplicate it in terms of wondering oh, which hand, what's going on. What letter's beneath you? V. The V. So I want to picture him in the fight. There's my V. Just, it's like this, going out into his space, like this. It's not this way. It's a 45 into his space. So when I'm moving, I'm still staying in his space here, OK? When I'm moving, I'm still staying in his space, just like that, OK? So I don't want to move this way. What happened? Isn't it crazy? It's wild, right, how fighting is like just little errors changes the whole. It's science, OK? Here, it keeps me inside his space, close enough to strike. If I take the same step and move at a straight angle here, look how much space. Now I'm, I'm jammed up. I can't strike him. So I need to be able to keep myself inside of his space just like this. Okay. So what letter is it? V. v. So that first hand comes here. Now don't forget, when a fight happens, nothing happens standing still. When a fight happens, he wants this punch to meet my face. So he's got to move with it. He's going to come in, and i got to be able to move as he's coming in. He comes in. I'm moving out of the way like that. Notice I'm keeping my center line on him at all times. OK? So now he's jammed up. Mine is on him. I can throw a number of things from this position, OK? So everyone understand questions? Any? Um, yes. So well. In reality, no. So I'll give you an example. Um, for the purposes of this drill, it will matter. Okay. Otherwise, we'll have a collision. But will this angle one work off the jab? It's one of my very favorite things to do. Okay? I'm having you work the jab now angle two, but that's only because I want you to get the habit of that reverse punch coming and crossing out of it. Okay? So, but one of my very favorite things to do, and it is so effective, I took 20 students to the Diamond Nationals, uh, which was like the, it's like the biggest tournament in the world. All of them coming home with first place trophies and everything. And one of my favorite moves we train for is in sport karate tournaments, they do a lot of flying back fists. I mean, it's like, uh, it's like they'll be over here, and they're like, oh, like with the front hands. Just to tag and get that one point, you're going to see it a lot in sport karate. And I train my students to do the angle one and hook punch off the line. And it was just all day long. It was just like, whoa, bonk, like people falling over because all you have to do is move out, light, move out of the way, pow, hook punch as they come past flying with that back fist. They're just, look, at what they, look at it too. It's like beautiful. They're like this. <laughs> Their chin's right out. So the angle will work off of different techniques. This is just so you learn the floor, OK? So let's try it, guys. On your feet. There you go. All right, guys, here we go. Let's work those skills again, the hand combinations. So first is number one, we're going to do jab. Everyone say jab. Hold the hand bow, out, back again. Now, what's the key here? No movement at all. If you move your head, if you move your shoulder, they know you're coming. So you see a lot of people are training like, they're, they're training like, like, let me work my arms out here like this. You're practicing telegraphing. You have to learn to hide everything from the waist up. 
when you're striking. Now, when you're moving in for a fight, you do need to learn how to move your head and how to move and, and swivel out of techniques. But in terms of learning the skill, you have to learn to isolate everything happening from here up. Even when you're kicking, you're keeping a glass of water on your head at all times. No shoulder movement. So right now, everyone, watch. All you need for the jab is to let the hand go. Push from the elbow, back. So from here, we're going to go, back. So when I say go, that's number one. Jab, jab, back again. Ready? And what? Good, back again. I want you to breathe out because you need to breathe back. Anybody ever been in a fight? Yes. I know our Marines have, yes. Okay. Now, what happens, what happens, when, it's, what happens when that fight is on? You get the adrenaline dump, right? You get the adrenaline dump, and what happens? You lose your ability to think clearly. You lose your ability to breathe, right? You're gasping for air. Okay, I called it killer instinct last time. I'm talking about that God-given uh, adrenaline dump that you need to be able to push through a very dangerous situation. You need to learn to reserve that and to control that at all times. So when you're in a combat situation, you have to always breathe in your nose, out your mouth, always. You're constantly keeping your heart slowed down until that moment you're ready to release that adrenaline dump and that killer instinct, okay? So here we go. Hands are up. You have to always breathe. So when you're striking, you're breathing. Breathe back. Ready to go again. Here we go. Jab, front hand. Ready, one. Ready, one. Hide the movement. Hide it. One, 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 one. And freeze. For the jab, you are turning the knuckles over, hitting with your front two knuckles only on the target and pull it back. Front two knuckles only. If you hit with the rear knuckles, you're going to break them. You're going to break them. Absolutely. you break yours? Yes. You hit with your rear knuckles, you're going to break those knuckles. I guarantee it. You have to hit with your front two knuckles only. And remember last time I explained to you, it's pounds per square inch. This is martial science, fighting science. How do you use these God-given tools as effective weapons. Well, if you use the rear knuckles, you break them and you don't get as much power. If you use your front two knuckles, you're taking pounds per square inch. All your, all your strength, all your mass, all that energy thrown into knuckles. I use Stellar as an example. If he was laying on the ground or you were laying on the ground, what would you rather me stand in your chest with? A sneaker or a stiletto heel? A sneaker, why? Because the sneaker spreads out the pounds per square inch, right? A stiletto heel puts everything down at that one point. So think of your knuckles like the stiletto heel. Here, straight and back again. Ready? And front two knuckles. One. 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 Front hand. Front hand. Front hand. Ready? And one. 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 Imagine the attacker's right in front of you. Go for his nose. One. 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 Now, what's the goal in a jab? To knock him out? Okay, a jab is a lead or a sting. Okay, it's a setup or a sting. So I'm trying to pop him with it, so I stun him, sting him, or it's a lead for something else. I may use a jab just to break the gap, just to break the gap, to get myself in, cover his face, bang, inside there, okay? So it could be just a lead for the next move, okay? You can throw jabs to the body even here down, okay, and that sets up for the next one inside here, okay, so jab, ready everyone, guards inside, and jab, 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 freeze, where's all your power, hips. who remembers, yes, hips, it's not in these massive biceps and all the rest, it's in how you use your body, this is martial science, it's how you use your body, so we're going to use our hip to strike, guards are in, by your face, this is called a cross or a reverse punch. Same rules apply, hide the movements, take your back foot, pivot, use your hip, let your hand go, and come back. Ready, pivot, punch, and back. Ready, pivot, punch, and back. Now, see my foot? I'm up all the way, okay, and back. So when I say go, you're gonna cross here, here, ready, and cross, ready, Two, 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 two. We're gonna do this is a rear hand. Two. Pivot with the back foot, punch with that hand. Ready? And two, 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 
two, one, 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 two, one, two. Oh, I got all kinds of heads moving all over the room. Okay, glass of water on your head. Ready, and one, two. You don't want him to see what you're doing. Ready, one, two, 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 one, two. You getting tired yet? Good, okay, here we go. Now, left foot forward, right foot back. We're, we learned jab, cross, and hook. Left foot turns this time because all your power is in your hip. You're driving this move. Look how close you have to be for the hook punch. Look how close. This is a wild hook punch. It's going to do nothing but probably hyperextend your elbow, really make him mad. Ever see guys who start squatting, you know, like, you know, like, just look at, uh, what's it called? World Star. World Star. <laughs> look at World Star fights. Very good. See, you read my mind, okay? You know we're watching together. Okay. You see those fights, they record street fights, and you have guys just, they're just like this, right? Their chin's out, and they're just like trying to make some, so, please, please, something's got to hit. Okay, when you fight, you got to be smarter. This is going to maybe hyperextend. Also, look how easy this is to see, okay? It's a mile away. You may as well send him a letter, okay? It's coming, okay? <laughs> so you have to be close here. All the power is bang, okay? I can come inside. I can come here, but it's close. So what do my hands have to be? I mean, you can't be inside here like this, okay? It's unrealistic. He's striking too. He wants to take your head off too. So hook punches comes from the hip. Here, I can hook here, bang, or hook high, boom, chin, okay? Front two knuckles again. Here, okay? Or sorry, middle knuckle. Okay, guards are inside. Guard your face, pivot your front foot, draw the elbow up, and just push the arm through, okay? So here, strike. Eyes on the target. Here, here. Where's your power? Okay. Grab a stick and just drive it. Boom, okay? It's not like this. That's not a hook punch. That'll also hurt your hand. It's like this, okay? Here, okay? Your eye, watch this. The hand goes. The head stays, okay? It feels natural to want to move your head with it. I need my eyes on my target because I might have to throw some more hands on the inside. Eyes, eye to eye with your target. So pivot your front foot in, hook punch. Okay, pivot your front foot in, hook punch. Now, I want you to picture right now there's a table about as high as your chin, okay? You're going to place your hand on that table and let it ride the table, okay? So it's not going to wobble around okay it's gonna ride the table straight across ready and hook good ready hook 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 you gotta pivot your front foot all the way in hook that's it hook look at the attacker he's in front of you ready hook all right relax here we go now we're gonna do jab cross hook we're returned what I want you guys to do after that hook is I want you to come back. Remember we did the elbows, right? We're gonna work the elbows this time. For this, you gotta have your hands loose. Remember that, who, who practiced this? I hope you did, practice, good. Okay, now for the elbows, these are devastating tools, devastating. I mean, it's bone, it hurts. I mean, it's, it's a knockout technique. These are your deadly tools, your elbows. So you're gonna use just this two inch space of the elbow right there. You're not going for the arm. You're working for that elbow tip, two inches of that right on the attacker, okay? So for this one, it's different. You have to loosen your arms up for this one. So guards are inside. Here's what we're gonna do. You just threw a hook punch. We're gonna work on the drills, the drill and the pads in a minute here. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to let your right hand go limp. Draw your hands back. Now draw the hand, bring it straight down, down at a 45. And when you finish, it's right there in your chest, like this. This is the only time I would ever ask you to be a man and put your, your wrist up like this, okay? Okay? So you want to take your hand nice and loose and expand, come down, good, and come back. Ready? Try that again. So I want you to draw your hand back, loose, come down, end, right there, loose, down. Yes, just like that, okay? Now, this is, this is even worse. Think about it. I showed you how close you had to be for the hook punch to work. Look at this. Closer. Look at this. 
See, look at the, look, right? I mean, you have to be inside this guy. You're here. I mean, it's tight. It's worth it. It's worth it, okay? But you got to get real, real comfortable with this guy. That's how short the elbow is. Ready? Guards are inside. Everyone draw your arm back. Limp, 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 and <laughs> pivoting, okay? Try that by yourself for a minute. Just work it yourself. No, because it's you're focusing on this. This is just you well, just don't hit yourself like that. It's just resting there, like this. And this hand should be up here. Boom. Okay. Now look how close you are. So where should your other hand be? Guarding. Guard. Guard. Ready? To 45. So draws up, smash down against his temple, against his jaw. Okay. Like this should end here. Yes. Pivot. Pivot, pivot, pivot. Ready? Pivot, pivot, pivot. All right, guys, here we go. Follow my lead again. Everyone say jab. jab. Cross. Cross. Hook. Hook. Ready? Elbow. Elbow. Bring it out. Now bring it straight across, straight line across. Elbow. OK? Ready? That's what we're going to do. That's the combination. You're going to do it on the pads. Jerry. All right, so your guards are inside. You're going to throw jab, cross, Hook inside here, and then here. So he's going to see these nice and tight. You're going to throw jab, cross, hook here, inside, and here. Okay. So jab, cross, hook, elbow, elbow. I want you to work on making contact. One, two, three, four, five. Inside. Let's get on this carpet. Okay. Maybe that looks better. Yeah. Slip and slide. Here we go. Guards here. And you good? Yeah. OK. Yeah. <laughs> Inside. Everyone understand? Yeah. Got it. OK, here we go. Let's get guards. All right. Who wants to hold the pads the first time? So fighting stance up front, guys. Here we go. You're going to jab. Jab the farthest one. Cross. Hook. Now line up. Elbow. Elbow. All right, now, what are, we, what are we forgetting? When you're elbowing, where's the other hand? Guard, guard. guard your face, OK? Here we go. And give me two sets, all right? Two sets. Ready? By yourself, and I want to hear you guys breathing. Go for it. Not bad. Don't kill your pad holder. All right, and then when you're done, you move your way all the way around. And next up. Just do the slide. If you can, get these fingers out of the way. Yeah, I don't want you to get your, your fingers yeah, clipped. Okay. All right. There you go. Good. Watch out, guys. Watch out for that camera, and watch out for the person behind you. Good. Tighten your fist. Not bad, not bad. Pad holders, if you can, on that elbow, the first elbow, draw that right arm back a little bit so they have some space. So the, you're going to draw it back like this when they elbow. Draw it back for them, OK? Go for it. Elbow number one over here, elbow number two over here. OK, elbow number one here. Elbow here, one. Boom, yes. and then elbow two. Boom, nice. there you go, nicely done. All right, Stella, go for it. One, two, three. Elbow, that's supposed to be a hook punch. Good, elbow, elbow. Not bad, loosen the hands up for the elbow, Stella. OK, switch feet, switch feet. Let's try it again, ready? Jab, cross, jab, cross, hook. Good job, elbow, this one. Elbow, and then the other elbow. Boom, there you go. He's a lefty. Does he adapt? Or? Well, just if we had lots more time, we'd be switching sides. Oh, OK. Good. Yeah. Well, actually, everyone freeze for a second. If we had lots of time, we'd be doing this combination a lot more, and we'd be switching sides so that you'd actually learn it on both sides. Just for the purpose of uniformity this night, as we're learning the moves, we've got to do it on one side just because of crash course, OK? But for all you guys that are south paws, same, everything is exactly the same. Just reverse the technique and work the drill the same way you did it on this side. Okay, ready? And martial arts is good. It's always, it's, it's 
one great side, one good side, not one great side, one bad side. Like when people say, you know, this is my good leg. I can't, I can't do anything with this one. It's like, that's not a good idea, okay? It's got to be great, good, okay? Never great, terrible. Here we go. Guards in. Go for it. Hey, that first one. Let's try to let it come all the way up here and come down on my hand. Ah, there you go. And I want you to come through it. There you go, like that. So you're going to come down at a 45. Let this hand rest in your chest, not in your hand. Right here, it's going to end there. Try it. Boom! Oh, huge difference. So it starts right here. It's, it's going to start here. And then as you as you oh. come in with it, you let it rest right there and come in all the way through. Okay, try it one time. Go for it. Okay, see how close? Yeah, yeah. go for it. Boom, okay. So you're going to actually try to step through here. Okay, here. There, go for it. Now, one rule, one rule, everyone pay attention. You don't want the elbow to drop this direction. What's here? You're going to hit the funny bone, okay? So you might be like, yeah, ah! You hit the middle of the fight, you lose your whole arm. So don't bring it down coming this way. That's real bad, okay? You're going to come through. So you should just practice in the mirror. Watch. In the mirror, your hands like this, loose, just inside, side, side, up up like this okay so you work just loosening your arms up let that elbow come through go for it it's like we're holding our breath gentlemen you guys gotta breathe all right break how you guys feel good Okay, go get a drink of water, guys.